Hello and welcome to Batik Resist and Wash Techniques inspired by the Black Long Culture. We've been studying their designs and in our previous video we took some notes. And in today's video we're going to do the Batik process and we're going to need some watercolor paper. I'm using a 9 by 12 sheet. You'll need your drawing tools and you'll need some glue. Now I'm going to be using this blue school gel because it shows up better on the paper and you might want that if you're going to freehand your design. Also you're going to need some brushes, some wide flat brushes for our wash and you'll need some ink or watercolors to make your wash with. So go ahead and collect your materials, pause the video until you're ready and meet me back here. All right, now you've got all your stuff. Our first project is to draw our design onto our watercolor paper. Now you can use your design that you made last time, which is what I'm going to do, or you could make a new design. Uh, and actually you can skip this step if you don't want to draw your design on there with pencil. You can actually draw your design directly onto your watercolor paper with the glue. Uh, as long as your glue shows up well enough that you can see where it is. So now I've uh, drawn my design on there, I'm going to trace my design with the glue. And I do that by squeezing the glue gently while holding it upside down, trying to maintain an even pressure. And you can see here, the glue likes to turn itself into little dots, even when you uh, make it look like a line at first. It kind of congeals into dots, so you might have to go over it more than one time. This project is going to be about layers. Layers of glue to help block the paper from being colored in those areas by the wash that we're going to do later. And then later we'll be talking about layers of wash as well. But right now, just focusing on those lines of glue, trying to get them nice and neat. I made a little mistake there, so I'm going to wipe it away. So, when you've made your design, make sure you let it dry for at least 45 minutes. Longer if you can. But the main thing is to make sure you don't paint on it until it is dry. Speaking of paint, let's talk about creating our wash. Now, if you already have a wash that you picked up that's a kind of liquidy color, right? Something like that. It could be ink or it could be something else you can get started right away. But if you don't, I'm gonna show you how to make a wash with water and watercolors. So first we're gonna get a little bit of water into a little dish. And we'll pick up our, that's a little too much. Pick up our brush here. I'm gonna go ahead and pick out the color I want. So I'm gonna go with blue because the black mong, uh culture of artists, they dye their fabrics with indigo, which is a dark kind of blue. And they use a natural dye that comes from the plant called indigo, but I don't have that, so I'm just going to use my watercolors. And you can see each time I soak up some paint with my brush, I dip it into the water and the water gets a darker shade of blue. So you might want to mix colors but I would invite you to practice putting all of one color in before you switch to another color. So you don't mix in your paint tray, they only mix in your little tub that you've got here, your little container that you've got. Of course, you can use any kind of little container like this, whatever you got around the house. I'm going for a deep dark blue here, so you might end up mixing in black or even purple later, but first I just want to try and get as much blue in my wash as I can without completely using all of my blue. And this is starting to look pretty strong. Remember the more water you add, the lighter the color will be when it's on the page. So. Less water is okay. All right, I think I've got a good blue here to start with. So I'm gonna get out my cap here, put it on my little wash, come back to that, put my water off to the side. 
Now I'm going to apply the wash to my design. All right, got my brush, got my wash, and I'm going to just start sweeping my flat brush across the paper. I load up my brush with the wash that I've made, and then I sweep it across. You can see the paint is kind of running away from where the glue was, kind of beads up around those areas. But it's going to be faint at first. This is a kind of uh, batik process that requires multiple layers. In the video we saw earlier, uh, the lady describing her village's process said that they leave the, the fabric in the dye for three days and two nights. So it takes a long time for the color to sit into the fabric. Now we're not using fabric here, we're using watercolor paper, but the principle is still the same. It takes a lot of time and effort to get this paper to be completely one color, right? To make it all uniform. So I'm trying to use these even brush strokes as I'm spreading the paint across the paper. Some of it's sinking into the paper. And once I've got it all pretty even, I'm gonna let it dry for a while. It's all starting to look pretty blue. And you can just make out where the glue has made a difference. Now that it's dried, you can see the difference a little bit better. And I'm adding a second layer that's a little bit darker. And I'm only gonna apply this to some areas, not the whole painting. So this is kind of fun to add an extra layer in some areas to make it darker. You can also, between uh, washes, you can also add extra details with more glue. Or if you've got a white crayon, uh, that's also another way you can resist this wash. There we go. I'm trying to stay in my edges here. The fact that the uh, glue I used on this project was a light blue when it dried is also pretty interesting because it, it almost has no color, but because I did a blue wash, it kind of sticks out in a different way. Take your time on this part too. Remember, whenever you have watercolor on the page, it will look darker at first than it will end up being, because when it dries, it becomes lighter. I'm gonna spread around some more paint here. I've got some pools up here. I'll spread those out. There we go, not too bad. So when you're done, make sure you drip all of your uh, wash back into your container and clean out your brush and leave your brush drying while sitting up, not on its bristles. So there you go, I hope you ended up with something you're proud of. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Can't wait to see what you guys make and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.